with your friends how are you all doing i hope you're all doing fine i am fine too i thank god welcome back to my channel if you know that you are a returning subscriber thank you for your love thank you for your support and i would like you to know that i appreciate too much i don't take you for granted guys but if it is your first time here on my channel hello welcome to my channel please before you leave remember to subscribe and when you subscribe click on that notification bell you'll find it down there so that you'll be the first one to be notified whenever i upload a new video i promise you you always enjoy every content that i upload on this channel so guys in our today's video we are going to be having a story time of a zambian lady actually guys this is part three of judith's love story a zambian lady who thought had found love on online dating site and then made the arrangements to relocate to that guy's country which is albania and the guy's name is ama but after arriving in his country guys the worst happened that made her say that because it's the day she joined that dating site. So in this video, I am going to be taking you through what happened after arriving in Albania, after Ama promising her the world. Because Judith tells us, before traveling, Ama told her, you are going to be living like you are in paradise. So when Judith was leaving Zambia, was like, wow, now it's time to go to my paradise finally <laughs> but those us didn't know it was going to be otherwise it was going to turn out to be hell not paradise <laughs> yeah so without wasting much of your time let us jump into this love story so guys finally they arrived at ama's house and arriving there found ama's ex-wife but judith takes us back that when they were still communicating, as Judith was still in Zambia, Ama told her they are divorced and that ex-wife is sick, has mental illness and they live separate houses. <laughs> but to her surprise, they did not live like separate houses. It was the same same house <laughs> divided by a door. So she was kind of surprised, but what surprised her the most, Ama's ex-wife when saw Judith, oh my God, tells us she looked at her for a minute without even blinking. <laughs> she found it weird, but at the same time had to remember that Ama told her the ex-wife has got mental illness. So she had to ignore it and yeah, was welcomed in the house, given food to eat. Also, Judith tells us because the ex-wife had mental illness could take some medication and there was a time when she neglected taking her medication that's when ama had to take the situation at hand be the one to give her the medicines every single morning so they could see each other guys it's not that they were divorced and living like different houses they don't see each other at all no it wasn't like that so guys the night comes and when the night came, they did not sleep in the same bed. The goodies were not shared that same, same day. No, she slept in a different room. Reason is, Amma wanted to do some medical analysis on her. Judith tells us when she was still in Zambia, did a medical analysis. But Amma could tell her, don't try to bribe anyone. The results should come as they are. Because when you come here, we are going to repeat again <laughs> the medical analysis. And Judith told Amma, I'm not like that, Amma. I can't bribe anyone. And deep inside her was like, even if I'm very, very desperate, I cannot go to such extent, yeah? So when she arrived, no goodies were shared. And the next day, there is a lady who came at Amma's house and did a medical analysis on Judith. So they had to wait for the results. And as she was waiting for the results, was not supposed to use the kitchen at all, at all. And when she could use the washroom, was supposed to disinfect, yeah? Till the results 
wear out. So guys, Judith was not supposed to use the kitchen or the kitchen utensils till the results were out. So she waited and eventually the results were out. But when the results were out, oh my God, it was bad news because it was discovered that Judith had candida and chlamydia. Yes, Amma, yes, he freaked out, but before had talked to Judith and asked her, when was your last time to share the goodies? <laughs> And Judith told him. So having those diseases, Amma had made a research to know how long it takes, you know, when you enjoy the goodies and someone infects you with chlamydia to show. And the results he got, it was after three months. And Judith was like, I had to tell him the truth. When was the last time for me to share the goodies? Because I don't like to lie. I prefer telling the truth. Because when you tell the truth, it will remain the truth but when you tell lies you might forget and later give a different version the so, dear friends what happened after Alma discovering that judith had those diseases he had to go to the pharmacy buy the medications and immediately judith started using the medication but it was going to take her some time till she finishes the medication and after finishing go and do another test so that they can see she is clean and after that then enjoy the goodies with Amma. so guys another thing that judith tells us is that when she arrived Amma told her that every single morning has to greet Amma, and not just a good morning greeting <laughs> No, she has to say, good morning, my master. I am your wife. If she forgets that, there was going to be trouble for her. So every morning could wake up and say, good morning, my master. I am your wife. And guys, with this, if you are on online dating sites or apps searching, then you come across a guy, he starts telling you he's looking for a slave should call him master like last time there is a lady who was chatting with a guy and this guy was telling her you should call me daddy <laughs> you should tell daddy everything you should do everything that daddy tells you to do <laughs> i told her girl <laughs> block this dude <laughs> he's weird already <laughs> Yeah, and I remember doing a video here. I told you when you find a guy online, then he tells you, I'm looking for a submissive woman. Don't take it lightly. Now we get vivid examples from a story like this. It's not that Bella wakes up and comes here, starts telling you stories so that, you know, it's part of the content. No, <laughs> I tell you things because guys, I've got enough experience. Yeah. And Judith tells us when she was still in Zambia, when Amma told her wanted a lady who is submissive, wanted a slave, took it lightly, was like, maybe it is something that I can handle. And you know, as black African women, we are trained, you know, to be submissive to our men. <laughs> so that is why Judith took, took it lightly and was like, you know, I'm a very humble woman. I am polite. <laughs> I am loyal. <laughs> Down to earth. <laughs> I will handle this. I don't see anything weird with the word submissive, but you who is watching this, I'm telling you, when you see a guy is telling you, I'm looking for a submissive woman, run, my sister. There is fire. <laughs> don't play with it cause it will burn you okay so with this story i'll be telling you things into details things that happened okay this is not to scare you or tell you no european guys are bad don't come to europe because <laughs> i know sometimes you know when i tell you guys even if you're desperate even if you want to come to europe do not come if a guy is like this and you'll be like, you know, she's there, married already, lives in Italy. That is why she's talking like that. In Swahili, if someone could say this in Swahili, could say, yeah, yeah, I'm a fika. That is why she's talking like that. She doesn't know how it feels like being single. She doesn't know how it feels like being desperate. But what I'm telling you, I know how it feels like 
to be single, you know, live alone. Remember guys, I told you I am an orphan. At some point I was living alone. So yes, I faced that loneliness. At some point, yes, loneliness was hitting me just like it is hitting you now. But it shouldn't make you be desperate. Take a guy that is telling you I want a slave, call me my master, and I want a woman who is submissive. No, no, no. Because guys, I told you, if I tell you Europe is bad, I'm going to be a hypocrite. <laughs> It's not bad. It's good. You know, living here is good. I feel really good to be living in Italy. I feel so blessed to be married to my husband, you know? Yeah. But Europe will be good if you find that right man, that quality guy that I've been telling you about. Not a guy that wants a slave guy that tells you call me my master <laughs> not at all if you take that kind of a guy europe won't be good it will be hell for you speaking to you as a sister who truly loves you and wishes the best for you all so in this story i'll be taking you back then <laughs> returning you back to albania so here judith tells us before she came, <laughs> they talked also about enjoying the goodies. And Alma told her that, you know what? For me, I won't be able to satisfy you in bed. Because my eggplant <laughs> was reduced when I did my heart surgery. So it reduced, told her to these centimeters and became these centimeters. <laughs> so expect not to be satisfied in. But what I'm asking you is to satisfy me in. You must satisfy me in bed. <laughs> if you don't, I am going to tell your family that you don't satisfy me in. And I know in Africa, if you don't satisfy your man, that's an embarrassment. <laughs> so Judith was like, no, don't worry. Even if you won't be able to satisfy me, it's okay. But for me, I will satisfy you in... Guys, if you watched my last video, I think this tells you something. When I was telling you, don't enter into arguments that will tie you <laughs> to wrong guys. So here Judy <laughs> is making an argument that later will surely regret. And we are getting into that right now because you're going back to Albania. <laughs> So guys, Judith continued taking her medication, you know, to treat herself so that she does not infect Amma. And at the same time tells us when she was coming, had to do her hair, you know, look beautiful. <laughs> so at the saloon where she went in Zambia, they pulled her hair a lot and created something like a very big ball, a pimple, a very big pimple here, which also gave her some infection. So Amma told her was going to take her, see the doctor, and they had to set an appointment on the day when they were going and the time when they will be going. But Judith tells us because she was still at home, kept at home, treating herself, wasn't going to the office, Amma could go to the office and Judith could remain at home. So yes, guys, that day came that Judith was supposed to go with Amma to the doctor concerning her big pimple here because it was even giving her headache, couldn't sleep very well at night. So when the time was almost approaching, Judith had to call Amma to remind him that it's almost time for us to go to the doctor, you know. <laughs> was like Bella I was in trouble the guy started shouting at me was like this is all what you think and tells us it was during summer time so Amma told her my kids they think of me they have even put my car on the shed but you are very selfish the only thing you do is only to think of yourself you think I don't remember I remember that you're supposed to go to the doctor why are you calling me Oh my God, a guy shouted and shouted and shouted. Judith was like, okay, so this is it. What can I do? I am here now. And that was the first time to see the bad side of Amma when he shouted at her. 
And you guys that watched part two, you remember Judith telling us that Amma had lots, lots of medical issues. It's true, guys, that Amma had lots, lots of medical issues. Tells us had one kidney, had had a heart surgery, had acids in the stomach, had lots of allergies. And Judith tells us she was supposed to take care of him at the cost of $300. So guys, as she was almost finishing her medication, you know, for cancer and chlamydia, Emma told her that he couldn't wait to have them be goodies. <laughs> so told her, yes, I know we had agreed that you take the medication and when you finish, you do a test to see if you are clean, then we can enjoy the goodies but i cannot wait i can't really wait so what you're going to do when you finish your medication now before you go for another test we need to have the goodies <laughs> oh my goodness judith was like okay what can i do <laughs> she accepted but it's not that Amma was going to enjoy the goodies the normal way no 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 he wanted Judith to use her, I think you understand, you know, take the con. <laughs> Guys, I made a very big mistake and if you're eating now, just stop. <laughs> because I made a mistake when Judith was sharing this story, I was like, okay, I'm going to listen to this when I am on my lunch break eating. <laughs> after listening i felt like you know yes because it was really really disgusting all the food in my stomach was going like this <laughs> yeah that is why i am warning you don't eat anything okay so yes time came and the medications were done so it was time for judith and Amma to enjoy the goodies so guys what happened is that Amma had to put on the protection to protect himself because remember Judith had not yet done the second test to see if she is okay yeah so that is why he had to put you know the plastic <laughs> yeah but Judith tells us seeing the thing she was in a shock. She was like, Bella, it was very, very, very small. The guy had nothing, nothing. If I am to compare it, I can compare it with a thumbnail, this one. Yeah, that's how I can compare the thing. Imagine that thumbnail and you put a plastic, you know, on it. <laughs> It wasn't even fitting. And Judith was like, it's not that I'm joking or I'm trying to mock him. This is the truth. The eggplant was very, very small. So guys, for Judith, she remained shocked. <laughs> Tells us even a thumbnail maybe is big. So we're supposed to do the job, okay? <laughs> Tells us, Bella, I tried my best, but <laughs> it wasn't even staying, you know, it wasn't staying at all. She suffered a lot because could try all the time to keep it, but it wasn't staying. <laughs> and remember, even the plastic, when I say the plastic, you understand, it is slippery, so it couldn't even stay in. So guys, in the end, the guy did not become full. When I say did not become full, let me help you understand. But as I explain more, you will understand better. He started criticizing Judith. What kind of a woman are you? You know why I brought you here. Why can't you justify me in bed? It's a shame that you can't justify me in bed. Judith told him, it's not that I have failed. I have not failed, but... <laughs> It's not working out. <laughs> oh my God. This is embarrassing, but at the same time, <laughs> very funny. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
So she tells us she was really traumatized by that. So guys, life continued and it was the second time, you know, to enjoy the goodies. <laughs> but they were still going to enjoy it like the last time using... <laughs> yeah. So when it was time, you know, Judith had to do the job. And as she was struggling to keep it remember it is of this size so she was really struggling a lot using her hands <laughs> and in the struggle oh my god made a mistake and bited him so when he got that bite it wasn't all that big but because he's old already his immune system is down he has got lots of medical issues it became really really bad and bad and bad so he went to the pharmacy and bought a wrong medicine <laughs> actually it was an intimate soap but it was an intimate soap for women <laughs> <laughs> so when he asked at home you know people around they told him did a mistake this is for women not for men because Amma was very very stubborn he used it and when he used it it got worse so this is when Judith tells us Bella I was in trouble big big trouble so Amma started blaming Judith telling her that it's her fault you know she has infected her and was like what is this you have infected me with what is this sickness you have brought from Africa so after all I have done for you this is how you pay me and Judith was surprised was like why are you blaming me it's not my fault and later he even twisted it the more <laughs> Now he knows what it is. He was like, this is candida. You have infected me with candida. Oh my goodness. Judith told him, but we did not enjoy the goodies, you know, the normal way. So why are you telling me that I have infected you? How comes? But the guy kept on blaming her and blaming her. Later on, went to the doctor and was given the right medication and it got treated. So after it got treated, he did not take Judith again to do the test, but continued to make her, you know, enjoy the goodies like I have explained. And Judith tells us every time they could enjoy the goodies, like I have explained their way of enjoying the goodies, Amma could tell her, kneel down, open your mouth so that he can put everything into her mouth. When I say everything, the dirty oh oh my goodness and cause he could use the plastic that i told you so he would tell her go take the spoon take everything from the plastic and you have to put it in your <sighs> just thinking about it i feel so so bad and judith tells us bella that smell that smell bella i felt very very disgusted uh. Ooh, some men are really really bad judith says she understands some people do it you know they like doing that with their partners but for her it was something that she never even thought of doing in her life imagine someone telling you take a spoon and put in your mouth <sighs> also judith tells us i was disgusted i told myself judith where were you going tells us it's only that she has got a very strong heart but if it was someone else with a soft heart could have due to everything that this lady went through with ama so could feel like vomiting tells us the whole time the whole day her stomach could you know oh my god the feeling that i told you i got when i was eating while listening to what judith was telling me concerning this i was like ah i wish i knew i could have listened this later maybe when i'm in the shower you know 
at least I shower and I feel like I'm taking the dirtiness away. Yes, I really felt so, so, so bad. And I'm someone who is very, very sensitive. When someone is in trouble, I try to put myself in her shoes. So that really destroyed me a lot. <laughs> and it reminds me of my friend when I started, you know, this guidance kind of thing. My friend was like, be careful. <laughs> I hope you won't go crazy because listening to people's problems, you can go insane. I was like, no, I decided to do this and I know I can handle it. Yeah, but that day really, I was so down, like really, really down. So guys, Judith tells us the guy was so cruel. He was so brutal. So time came when Judith had to be taken to the office. Remember, Judith was also supposed to work at his office and the job that she was supposed to do at Amma's office was to do cleaning of the office you know the bathroom everywhere do some laundry and whenever Amma wants someone to type an email for him then she was supposed to do it so that time came and she was taken to the office to be introduced to other workers so guys judith was taken to the office got introduced to other workers was told what she was supposed to do but was told you are supposed to use the washroom of other workers you're not supposed to use my own washroom because he had his own washroom he was the director of the company and used to work with his sons also was told whenever she uses the washroom is supposed to disinfect so she kept doing that and one time Amma told her you are supposed to change the towels judith was like i can't change the towels because no one is using them that's when Amma told her yes no one is touching them because they know you have can and clammy imagine guys so this guy went to tell everyone at office about her health condition judith really felt so so bad and even cried because felt so embarrassed that other people they know what is going on with her when it comes to those diseases so tells us because Amma told them everything they could treat her as if she has got a deadly disease which is so 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 bad and a toxic man will make sure that he humiliates you because humiliating you makes him happy so guys judith tells us the situation kept on and on being treated like that but when it came to her contract she had her contract she went to the immigration everything was registered she was a normal employee also, Judith adds that she wasn't the first African woman to be brought by Amma to Albania because when she arrived, Amma told her, you know, I had brought a lady from Sierra Leone. She was not good at all, was very, very lazy. All she could do is just shower, you know, look good and did not want to work. When I could talk to her, she could cry and lock herself in the room, refuse to eat. And yes, I used to beat her up because she was very, very lazy. In the end, I had to return her back to her country and I used the pandemic as an excuse that things are not going well with my company, so she should go back to Sierra Leone. But later, Judith came to find out that it wasn't the truth. It's the mother of the girl because she was only 20 years old who told Amma, pressured him, I need my daughter back. Because the girl could communicate with her mother, told the mother everything that was happening, how Amma was treating her, how Amma was beating her up. The mother was like, no, I need my daughter. So at that time, when Judith had started to see how Amma is, was like, maybe I am the only one who didn't see the red flags. But coming to know the story of the lady from Sierra Leone who was returned back, she was like, oh my God, so I am not alone. And in this situation or in her situation, tells us she can never laugh at any other woman that finds herself in trouble with a white guy that they met online because yes if you don't have enough experience you will fall into a trap 
of a wrong guy and that is why i am here guys using my voice to help you out so that you don't find yourself in trouble so guys judith tells us a lot happened and then one day in the morning Emma tells her in the office i am very very respected so you have to respect me you're not supposed to laugh even if i say something you're not supposed to respond even if I talk to you, you are not supposed to respond. Even if I get angry at you and I'm talking to you in a bad way, you are supposed to keep quiet. Judith was like, okay. So <laughs> they went to office that day and Amma said something. Judith forgot and laughed. She did not laugh like, ha, 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 ha. No, she was like, <laughs> you know, like that. Oh my God. Amma saw her, was like, what did I tell you to do about laughing? What did I tell you to do? Follow me in the next room. So Judith had to follow him in the next room and he ordered her to lower her pan. So she had to lower her pan. And when she lowered her pan, this guy used all his energy, whooped her back. She screamed so, so, so much, cried a lot. And after that, had to go to the office, you know, join other girls. So when she went to the office, all girls were looking at her. They were not saying anything, but looking at their faces, it's like they knew what Judith was brought for. Oh my God. So she tells us that was just the beginning of terror. Yeah. And during lunchtime, it was Judith to prepare his lunch. So in those first days, after seeing all that had happened, could live in fear, was very, very scared all the time and couldn't even talk to anyone. The guy could shout at her for no reason. All the time he could be shouting at her and that kept her very, very anxious. But later when he could calm down, could be like, I'm sorry for shouting at you. That is how I am. So things continued. Judith tells us she really passed through a lot in that guy's house so one day tells judith to prepare the bags because they were supposed to go out and tells us he had two bags one bag had medicines and water because he was supposed to take his medications and he was supposed to stay hydrated all the time so whenever he wanted water judith was supposed to have water at hand <laughs> and hand the water to um <laughs> So he had two bags, one with water and medicines. and other bag was the bag whereby they could pack in there clothes for him. For example, a jacket, gloves. If he feels cold, then the jacket is there. He has got his gloves. Everything is okay. So that day, Amma tells her, prepare the bag. But Judith didn't know that they were going far. So she took the bag with water and medicines. So the one with clothes, she did not take it and tells us Bella was a nurse to this guy. So before leaving, Amma asks her, where is the bag with clothes? Then Judith tells him it's inside. Oh my God. She tells us unexpectedly received a very big slap and he could slap her by the back of Halm tells us it pains a lot. She cried so much that day and tells us that's when she noticed the guy is a beater. The guy is a real abuser. Was telling me, Bella, I was abused. First degree abuse. That's what I went through with Amma. So he slapped her and was like, you must know why you came here. You must do what I tell you to do. And it's true, guys. The guy told her from the start before coming that you will do what I tell you to do. So you guys, now I think you know when a guy tells you I'm looking for a slave, you can go through this and even the worst. And after beating her, could tell her, oh, let's make peace. Oh, we have to make peace. We have to live good, you know, to understand each other. And she tells us, Bella, what could I have done? I didn't know anyone at all, but people knew his behavior. Because when she had a bandage here, one of the ladies at work 
asked her what happened to you because maybe she assumed it might be Ama who had beaten her up but it wasn't the case tells us at that time it was the pimple that she had another thing is that that lady that asked her at office what happened to her tells us was related to Ama actually the lady was calling Ama uncle because one time judith and ama went to visit his parents and found that lady there so when she found her there the lady asked her how are you doing judith was like i'm fine how are you i'm fine then the lady was like i'm glad to see that you still have your smile <laughs> on your face <laughs> Judith didn't understand at that time why the lady was saying that <laughs> but tells us it was that that Judith was yet to see the worst <laughs> yeah <laughs> so tells us the guy could harass her could shout at her could tell her move faster this is Europe you have to move quickly and even if he could give her a very simple task, like typing an email for him could make mistakes due to the pressure he was putting on her. So Judith tells us there was no peace for her at all. The first month started feeling a lot of pressure in her head due to that all the time was super scared. So from office could tell her, go home, I give you 30 minutes, I want this done, then you come back here. She could go and make it done. After that, Amma could come and tell her, this is not what I told you to do, why don't you listen? What is your problem? Oh my god, for me, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know if I could bear with that, guys. <laughs> Because you can't talk to me while shouting. <laughs> you have to calm down, let's talk. But shouting, no. But with Ama, the only thing he could do is shout at her. Judith tells us she tried her best to impress this guy, but he couldn't see. So he kept on slapping her unexpectedly whenever he could feel like. Judith could cry every single day tells us imagine that kind of life every day you have to live like that so one day Amma asks her how do you feel to be here and Judith was like to be honest I have lost all my confidence as a woman and I feel like a useless thing and another thing that Amma used to do is to tell everyone whatever happens to Judith even if she does a very small mistake to tell everyone she did this she did that you know to just embarrass her and humiliate her in front of everyone and tells us that made her to keep on making mistakes because she was no longer herself so at home in Zambia, yes, sometimes she could communicate with her parents and whenever they could ask her how is everything, she could say all is fine because Ama was there and could also try to brainwash her because whenever he could beat her up or shout at her, he could come and be like, what do you want? What can I buy for you? Should I buy you this? Should I buy you that? You know? all to wash her brain <laughs> to brainwash her and that's what toxic men do i've talked about this it's not that this guy remains bad all the time he will do bad things to you very very bad things to you but later he will turn and try to be like a good guy you know he likes you you're such a good woman because yes sometimes this guy would come and start telling her oh you're a very good woman you don't need to lose your confidence what you're doing is okay you're doing all good but some other times he could turn and start telling her you are so incompetent you are not capable of doing anything you're useless <laughs> and when they could enjoy the goodies then he doesn't you know become full then he could be like what kind of a woman are you could start criticizing her and tell her bad bad words that's how toxic men are so if you are in a relationship and sometimes the guy is bad and you're like i'm leaving this guy white now and then the next minute when he realizes 
that you are about to go, he turns, becomes sweet, starts sugarcoating you, telling you that he loves you, and you stay. <laughs> what I'm advising you, when he does to you those bad, bad things, do not look at those good things that he is doing to you. Just leave, my sister. Leave. So yes, after beating her, he could go and buy some things which Judith did not like or even appreciate. Because a man can't treat you like that and then turn, try to be, you know, kind, nicer to you. So guys, Judith tells us, my life went sour and sour every single day. And as she was keeping on surviving, that's when she came across my YouTube channel. And the first video to watch from my channel, I had shared a video of a Tanzanian lady who found a guy online and this guy was Spanish. If you remember guys, that story. And I've seen comments like most asking, how is she doing? Guys, I gave you an update that she is very, very okay now. The Spanish government came in and helped her, you know, to move her out of that house. Right now, she is very, very okay and has got her own job very very independent those who wanted to know the update the tanzanian lady who found a spanish guy online then the spanish guy was telling her to ask for an asylum <laughs> in spain and could treat her very very bad i posted on my community post but maybe most of you did not see that update so judith came across that video and tells us as listening to that video and she remembers very well the part whereby Catherine was telling us there is a relative of his boyfriend who was asking her if she knows the mother-in-law very well like trying to warn her but sadly Catherine did not pay attention later on came to know that the mother-in-law is evil so she had to relate with the relative of Amma at office who told her, I am glad I still see your smile. That was like a warning that girl, more is to come. We won't be seeing that smile anymore. But Judith too did not pay attention to that. <laughs> but later on came to understand why the lady said like that. And I have done lots of videos here. I remember talking about this. You find a guy online and then you start telling your friends, relatives, everyone is against the guy, you know? <laughs> Oh, maybe this guy takes you to his country, you get introduced to his relatives and you're lucky. One of the relatives tries to talk to you that, you know, there is danger that is coming for you. Never ignore that. Never ever ignore that because stories like these tell us to not ignore okay so judith tells us that is the first video to watch on my channel and from there continued watching my videos they could really really keep her company and kept on opening her eyes because remember this lady did not have any experience when it comes to online dating so yes judith continued to work and tells us one day they were asked to carry a desk and tells us that desk that have got a drawer the drawer so as they were carrying the desk Amma told her to be careful not to let anything fall so there were two with another lady and it was the mistake of other lady the drawer fell down oh my god Amma got aggressive was like what is this why did you drop the desk I told you to be careful. It is clear you don't deserve to be here. Oh, goodness. Tells us was very, very humiliated. Couldn't answer, you know, to explain that it wasn't my fault. Couldn't, because remember, she is not supposed to respond. When he talks, you are supposed to keep quiet. And everyone could keep quiet. Tells us people were not happy. They could work in that office, but it's because they didn't have any other option to make their family survive. That is why they did not leave. They could not talk when Amma is around. Everyone could be quiet. And Judith was not supposed 
to exchange numbers with anyone or talk with anyone like making friends no that one was not allowed at all at all so that day when the drawer fell down he shouted at her she felt really humiliated you know and embarrassed wanted to walk away Amma was like where are you going come here judith in her heart talked to god was like god if i wronged you punish me the other way please the other way that is not painful like this so judith kept on living in fear and whenever Amma could tell her save for me this email couldn't ask that that how can i do it and when she types she makes a mistake and later could tell her why don't you understand i taught you how to do it whereby he did not even teach her you know he just told her type this email so from there the guy could slap her with the back of his hand and immediately judith tells us could start bleeding because had a very sensitive nose so she could bleed a lot and he couldn't care could just tell her you see you have started to act up you only want attention what kind of a woman are you and could keep on shouting at her shouting at her then it came a time whereby Amma had a position that was supposed to be filled tells us she saw a thousand and thousands of ladies coming to ask for a job and those who found a job couldn't stay more than two days they could go but judith's prayer was like oh my god i wish these people stays longer so that at least they could be a barrier between judith <laughs> and amma at office so that all the humiliation all the abuses can stop because you know if someone is new it's easy to go and report amma due to his abuse so he could reduce you know the abuses but these people couldn't stay no one could stay there two or three days maximum they could go the new people so judith tells us from office could cross the road go home and from home cross the office to work every single day there was no off days nothing like that that existed and when she could go home could start working on him you know taking care of him remember he is an old guy <laughs> who is sick at the same time so wants a lot of attention did not even have time to take bath or even eat well no whenever she could sit down where are you come here you are supposed to be where i am you are my shadow and wasn't supposed to sleep before Amma sleeps and he could sleep at 10 so at 10 when he goes to bed that is when judith had little time to prepare herself and then sleep to wake up very early in the morning prepare breakfast clean the house and then go to office so judith kept on trying herself to impress Amma so that they can be in peace so that she can at least relax but nothing he kept on even being more aggressive and abusive to an extent she had to talk to her friend remember the friend who recommended to her afro introductions because the friend knew everything their story from the start when she was still in zambia and when she traveled to go to albania and also told me something that i thought maybe i should give you an advice on this tells us when she started chatting with ama with all the weird things that he was telling her being a wanting a submissive woman someone to take care of him judith and the friend they were like no but don't worry you go accept the offer because he is an old guy he can't do anything bad to you like you know taking your life but if you're watching this video and maybe you have something like that in mind that someone who is older <laughs> can't do anything bad to you or take your life you are wrong actually it is very very easy for an older guy to commit a crime why is that because 
<laughs> he is in that older age. <laughs> it's not that he's going to be scared. Oh my God, they're going to take me to jail. How my life is going to be. I still have life to live. No, <laughs> this person is old already. He has lived his life. So some, I'm not saying all. Yes, it's so, so easy for them to commit the crimes because <laughs> he is old already compared to someone who is young he would be like ah i can't just throw my life like that i have the whole life to live so never tap your ears and decide to close your eyes on red flags that you're seeing on an older guy and trust him be like ah, i'm going to his country he's inviting me even if i'm seeing this red flag that red flag he can't do anything to me he is old by the way <laughs> <laughs> hey, you'll find yourself in trouble, dear sister. Yeah. So with the friend, they were like, you just go. Ama is inviting you. You know, he's offering you a job. He's an older guy. He won't do anything bad to you. So when Judith told the friend all that was happening, the friend was like, if it is so painful, if this guy is hurting you, better return back home. But tells us, had no means of returning back home. Also, Ama took all her documents, you know, and was keeping the documents with him. So even if anyone offered, you know, to pay for her ticket, how was she going to travel? And also adds that was a breadwinner. So let's take an example. If she had decided to go to the Zambian embassy to ask for help, tells us the immigration process for her to be deported back to Zambia takes a month and plus. Remember, she is a breadwinner. Family back home is depending on her. Was like, Bella, what were my kids going to eat at that time when I am waiting for the immigration process? So that is why I couldn't do anything at all. And for those of you that watched part two, you can remember she did not resign from her job. So when she arrived, they contacted her that everyone is supposed to go back to work. Some had left their jobs because of the pandemic. So they were calling them back to start working and tells us the company was really, really good and they were paying them very, very well. Because she was already in Albania, couldn't do anything at all, at all. And at that time, you know, she had just arrived, hadn't seen a lot. <laughs> was like, later I regretted because if I knew what was going to happen next to me, my life in Amma's house, I could have even talked to my boss to help me get me a ticket so that I can return back. But at that time, I had not seen any danger. A lot was yet to happen. So dear friends, you are going to forgive me. Please, please, <laughs> we need to end here. We are going to continue in another video, which will be part four. I promise you guys, I promise you this time, I promise you. <laughs> It's going to be the last part, yes, of this story so that we can move forward and get to hear from other interesting stories. Yeah, because I've got a lot <laughs> that is coming. Make sure you don't miss part four. It's going to be very, very interesting because I told you at the end of the story, we're going to have a big smile. <laughs> yeah, and maybe it might help someone out there who is going through same situation like the one that Judith went through. So thank you so much, guys, for watching this video till now. I really appreciate much for your love and your support. Please, please, if you have liked this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, family, everyone that you think will enjoy this video and learn something. Watch my other videos too. They are super, super good. Comment below what you think about this video. If you haven't subscribed, what are you waiting for? Please join the family. Let us grow this channel. And thank you so much for subscribing. Until next time, guys, I love you so much. You're always here in my heart. Ciao, ciao. Mwah.